we want to find the domain of the composite functions f of g of x and g of f of x from the graph of f of x and the graph of g of x. So because we're not given the equations for f of x and g of x, determining the domain of our two composite functions can be more challenging. Let's start by determining the domain and range of f of x and g of x. Notice that we have a vertical asymptote here at x equals zero, which means the domain will not include zero for f of x. So we'll have the open interval from negative infinity to zero and the open interval from zero to infinity. And then for the range, notice how it will not include the y value of negative one. So we'll have the open interval from negative infinity to negative one and the open interval from negative one to infinity. And then for function g of x, notice how the domain will always be when x is greater than zero. So we'll have the open interval from zero to infinity. And then for the range, notice how the graph goes up and down forever with no breaks. Therefore, the range is all real numbers or from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now let's consider the domain of our composite functions. The domain of f of g of x must contain the restrictions of the domain of the inner function g of x and the restrictions of the domain of g of x such that the range of g of x is in the domain of the outer function f of x. So what this is really telling us is we start with the domain of the inner function and then because the output of the inner function becomes the input into the outer function, we may have more restrictions on the domain of our composite function if the outputs of g, the inner function, are not possible inputs into f or the outer function. So for the domain of f of g of x, we'll start with the restrictions for the domain of g of x, which is this interval here. But now we also have to compare the outputs of g to the possible inputs into f, the outer function. And we do have a slight problem because notice how zero is not a possible input into function f, but zero is an output from the inner function g. So we have to exclude the x value of g that would produce an output of zero for function g. And if we consider this point here, where the x-coordinate is one and the y-coordinate is zero, this is telling us that when g has an input of one, the output is zero, but since zero cannot be an input into the outer function f, we must also exclude one from the domain of our composite function. So the domain of f of g of x will be this interval here from zero to infinity, but we also have to exclude x equals one which means the domain of our composite function will be the open interval from zero to one and the open interval from one to infinity. Now let's consider the domain of g of f of x. Again, we'll start with the restrictions of the domain of f, which is given by this interval here. But now we have to compare the outputs of f to the inputs of g. And notice how we have another issue because notice how all the outputs of f are not possible inputs into the outer function g. So we need to make more restrictions on this yellow interval here so that the outputs will only be from zero to infinity. So let's take a look at the graph of f. We want to determine the interval for which the outputs of f are from zero to infinity, which would be this piece of the graph here. So we have to exclude the values when x is greater than or equal to one and when x is less than zero. Because these x values produce outputs of f that are not in the domain of the outer function g. Which means the domain of our composite function g of f of x is going to be the open interval from zero to one. These are the only inputs for the inner function that produce outputs that are possible inputs into function g. So as you can see, determining the domain of composite functions graphically can sometimes be quite challenging, but I hope you found these two examples helpful.